This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you've seen my Android videos before, you might be thinking right now, wait, I have seen Brad use iBez Paint X before. He has totally used it. But there's trying something, and then there's really putting your head down and trying something. And so yes, for reviews, I've jumped into iBez Paint X and I've sketched around for like 10 or 15 minutes and just tried it out and tested the pen, but I've never really sat down and created a fully fleshed out piece of art in it before. And I wanted to try that. Give it a real try. My name is Brad, blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the drawing. I think one of the things that Ibez Paint is best known for is one, being free and also being ad supported. Now, usually when you log into the app, there's an ad across the top. I didn't like that. I thought it too, took up too much space. So you can pay $10 and just remove all of the ads. But if you want to draw for free, you absolutely can. Most things are included. The one thing that isn't included are the brushes. So you'll tab open the brushes and what you'll see is many of these will be locked for you. There'll be a little lock icon. But if you tap on a lock icon, you can watch an ad and what it ends up doing is it unlocks that brush. Actually, it unlocks all of the brushes for like 16 hours or 18 hours, basically most of the day. Now there are a lot of brushes in here that are free to use before you even get to that. But once you do get in here and start looking at it, there are so many brushes. In fact, so many, it could be a little bit overwhelming at first. And most of these are pretty cool. Like I'll grab my uh, coarse pencil here and I'll use it. And you see, it's got a, it's got a nice texture to it. It's got a really good weight to it as I add pressure. I, I really like some of these brushes that they have in here. So this section is a section I am calling things I like. So you just saw me undo a bunch of stuff and that is because this app has the same gestures that you see in a lot of iPad apps, exactly like my favorite iPad app, Procreate, right? You can use two fingers to undo, you can pinch and zoom, you can pan around with two fingers. The other thing I really like is the brushes, which I mentioned before, these are really nice and and there's a ton of them. In a lot of apps, when you get a pen, and I use pens a lot, a lot of times they'll feel like a ballpoint pen where if you apply a lot of pressure, what you'll get is just like a tiny bit of pressure change. Here, I get a nice variation with many of these brushes right out of the box. And that is the number one thing that really attracts me to this app. And when you look at the gallery and the art many people have created, a lot of people are creating manga with this. And after using some of these brushes, I can totally see why, because the brushes that they include are perfectly calibrated for that ink style. Now, if I was gonna critique the brushes and the pen in general, at first it was just a touch too sensitive for me. And what that means is sometimes, you know, it'll pick up every wobble of your hand and an ink line could be too sensitive if you're going around a curve and it's like, it gets a little weird on you. But that brings us to another feature that I really like. And that is right up here. And that is the stabilizer. I have that turned up to 10. I don't know why it's turned up to 10 here, but what's really nice is by default, let me see if I can draw some lines and show you what I'm talking about. It kind of picks up a little bit of my hand wobble there, but if I turn it up just a little bit and I do it again, I can get a much smoother line. And so I really like how they've implemented stabilization, not on a brush by brush basis, but actually across the entire app just through that one uh, little section up here. I'm gonna bust out a new layer to talk about the next thing I wanna talk about, and that is the paint bucket tool. So let me draw a shape, grab my paint bucket and uh, change my color here. And then when I go to fill in this shape, it fills in perfectly. Um, if I zoom in, you can see what I'm talking about. Look at that edge. That is beautiful. What you find in so many apps, especially, uh, Photoshop is really bad at this. When you use the paint bucket, you get this like weird white edging there and you'll play and fiddle with things. And oftentimes what I wind up doing in Photoshop is I do my paints on another layer. So I'll use the selection tool first. I'll expand the selection on another layer. I'll use the paint bucket. Here, the paint bucket is flawless from the get-go because this takes me to my next favorite thing here and that is right here a reference layer what does a reference layer do well what it does is it lets me separate my inks from my colors let me jump to another drawing and show you what i'm talking about so this is the piece i created just the other day here and when i open up my layers what i have is my inks are separated from my colors so my inks are on one layer and what I did when I was using the uh, paint bucket tool is I set the reference layer 
to, I think I set it to a specific layer, and you can choose that layer here and say, okay, I want all of my paint buckets to reference this ink. So you choose that in the paint bucket settings, and then I could go in here and let me just, let me create a new layer, boop. And then when I start painting, it's just going to uh, fill in just where I want it to be. However, that is all on its own separate layer. Love that. There's some other stuff I didn't get to really play with too much. Let me uh, pop this in here. I'm going to add a comic frame because they have this cool comic frame thing. And what it lets you do is it lets you, you know, adjust some of the settings. I can change the horizontal and vertical shape of my comic. I can change the thickness of the borders. And now when that tool is on, I can draw my frame. So I could say, okay, I want a frame going across here. Uh, maybe I have one going here. Maybe I put a frame here. And then we do a funky angled frame like that. So it's kind of cool. It's a really fast, easy way to add frames to your comics. Now, before I get to the next section, I do want to shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. You already know Squarespace can build you a great website, but they also give you all the tools you need to take your business to the next level. Start by checking out all of the insights available in their analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Squarespace also provides SEO tools. Every Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a whole suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. And of course, you can stand out in any inbox with Squarespace's email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like the colors and your logo. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragcolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So I wanna to get to section two next. This is a section I call things I didn't expect. First up, the transform options took me by surprise. When I go to the transform tool, it gives me a lot of things down here in the corner. I expected it to be its normal thing. Like, okay, I can move it around and there's actually it gets really detailed. Like you can come in here and manually move it left and right. But what I didn't expect here is there's like, oh, there's a perspective transform. So if we want to do like the Star Wars crawl as a comic strip, I can totally do that. There's also a mesh form, which uh, lets me deform this in different ways where I can grab different parts of the mesh and move things around. So if you want a really wonky comic strip, you can, you can totally get that. I also think some of the symmetry tools they have are pretty cool too. Let me start by going up here into the corner and we have a lot of stuff. First of all, there's this ruler tool so I can set it up and now it's gonna let me uh, draw my lines as they align with the ruler. And if I wanna change that, you know, I can quickly come in here, change the angle of the ruler. So that's kinda neat. There's also some other things on here too, like you can change that into a circle and I can say, okay, I want my circle to be, you know, that big and let me draw around like that. I'm gonna go back to that tool because there's also these symmetry options. So of course you can draw on one side and what will appear it will appear on the other side. Going to go back. And then there's just a bunch of different angles for that. So for example, if I wanted this to work all over the place, let me try this out. I could make some really cool spiral effects. All right, so for this next section, I want to call it things I didn't like. And I want to preface this by saying all of this is nitpicking. Overall, I really like this app. Once I got rid of the ads, it, it felt much smoother to me uh, and, and I really enjoyed my time with it, mostly because the basic pens were really nice. Now, first up, they added in a recent update the ability to import PSD files. Those are native Photoshop files. Even though I updated the app, I still haven't been able to figure out how to import one of those. I still get an error thrown at me, which kind of takes me to uh, my bigger issue with this app in general, which is I think the interface is more basic and confusing and less user-friendly uh, than it really needs to be. For example, if I tap on an image, I'd think, oh, I double tap and I'd open it, but that's, that's not really the case. I have to select edit after it's open to kind of go to the next point. Uh, you know, or I'd expect I could just double tap it and, and open it. So there's just little things like that that seem to pop up all the time um, that make it just a little bit harder to use. Many of these things you do get used to over time. Now, the other thing that I, I noticed and kind of overwhelmed me, I guess, as I was using this were the number of brushes. Now, I, I talked about how many there are, and at first, my impression was, 
Wow, that's great. I have all of these brushes now that I've paid for this app, right? Who doesn't want more? But when you actually get into it, remembering what brushes that I last used or was using is it's kind of difficult. I think it'd be really nice. Something I'd love to see in this app is like a favorites column, right? Like I can star things so I can remember, hey, these are the pens that I use most often so I can go back to them easily. Something to make this process easier. Another example of this is the text tool. Let me select my text here and I'm gonna edit it. And I mentioned before there's a ton of fonts, which is really nice. Uh, but what ends up happening is it, it connects to the internet and then it just floods you with all these fonts and it kind of loads them in as you scroll. So it's really nice to have all these fonts, um, but it is a little bit overwhelming. And when they are loading, it does take a second and then all of a sudden you lose your place. The one thing they did add is like a favorites column. So you can go back and use your favorite fonts. So it's not like these are bad things. It's just all of these UI things I think could be done a little bit better. Um, but overall, I really like this app and I can see why so many of you have said, Brad, you gotta try it. It's really awesome. So, so thank you for that. And if you have any other recommendations, you know what to do. Drop them down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. <laughs>